Hi, welcome to the second part of my RX-7 diary. Here she is, back on the ramp for a couple of weeks later, but we've I finally got a chance to spend some more time on it. Um, since the last video, I've made this boost pipe. It's not finished yet. I had to order a bead roller to do the ends, but not bad. Aluminium welding. And I also made this little bracket for the power point, because normally when you take the battery off, this just hangs around. So today, firstly, I've got some updates to do on the ECU Master EMU Black. Uh, it now supports the ore meter and pump, so I need to do a bit of pinning out, make sure I can wire it in right, set it up, test it. Then my adapter for the plug and play is pretty much done. I've also got two radium fuel rails, a primary and a secondary rail, and I've also got 1050X injector dynamics injectors and 1700X secondary injectors to install. I've got a flex fuel sensor, I've got a LSU 4.9 wideband sensor and a boost control solenoid all to install. So we're gonna be pretty busy, one, maybe two videos, not sure. Basically what we're doing here, I've got my meter set up. It's pinned into the oil meter in pump connector. The oil meter in pump's down there somewhere. I'll try and show you in a bit. I've got my wiring diagram for the plug and play and I've got the four pins that I need to connect to. So one by one, each of these, at the moment I'm in this one here, S3. So I need to pin out where that goes to on the adapter. So I know that the all meter and pump, uh, these pins here, 4K, 4I, 4L and 4J. I've just done this one, 4K, S3. So you come inside, here's a mess of wires. And if we touch this one here, you can hear it beep. So it's a long drawn out process and I'm going to carry on with it. can do a bit of wiring on the adapter. I've also got a couple of sensors to add. So I'll probably do that at the same time. Yeah, and then we can test it. Turn the oil meter pop up. Car should smoke a bit, burn a bit too much oil. Then we know it works. We can also see the position sensor moving. Drops of fish. Okay, so adapter's off. Here is the glamour of development, I suppose. Take it upstairs. It's my new mezzanine I put in to do that myself. Got some nice stairs now. Just got to do a bit of painting, get rid of these stairs. Pretty dangerous. I did fall down once. So yeah, got some wires to add in and a couple to take out that I was going to use for the things, but ended up not using. Uh, things like the heat light doesn't work how I thought it would, so we'll save the output for something else. job is to remove this which is just uh, extra wire I had to loop in while it, while it's in the car um, for the fuel pumps to run so I just tee that into the other fuel pump output and add another connector for the wideband lamp sensor and then fit the sensor and we'll be good to go so now we're going to remove the wire for the, that I've used for the heat light because I don't like the functionality and so it's not that's not the point of it so you see an AUX3, which is this wire here. And I've already got the yellow cover removed. And that just pops out from these side bits here. So to remove a pin, so we're going for this pin here, which is AUX3. If you just grab the wire yourself, don't, don't pull it until you've just pulled back this tab here. So just use the deep pin tool or a small pick. Pull the pin. And the wire just falls out. Okay, so now before I start the next phase of wiring, so basically the lamb sensor, which is down the bottom of the downpipe down there, uh, the wires are gonna run along the back here. Previously, I've run a load of wiring through the bung, which is there where the standard wiring goes. Because I removed the air com when I did the intercooler, up until recently there's been two air com pipes coming through the bulkhead there. I've now I removed the air con housing, removed the air con rad condenser, whatever you call it, from that. 
I'm gonna reinstall that afterwards so that it's still filtered air. It now leaves you a much bigger gap. So you can see the bung there. And there you go. It's, it's not pushed in at the moment because I was known was. But now I've got these two holes which I can use and then seal up. So all my extra wires will go through there. It's nice and easy to get to. Once you take the glove box out and there's a bar that goes across here. So next is measure up the wires for the land sensor. The connector will fortunately fit through that hole which is lovely and I'll be able to measure that, measure the boost solenoid wires as well and run them through. It's quite nice actually for once. Normally taking 27 year old dash plastics apart is a bit of a mission. A lot of broken clips, but this all came out lovely. I'm looking forward to putting it back together and getting it looking good. Right, that's those four done. So that's, you can see these ones here that haven't got any heat shrink on yet. As you can see, Exciting things, exciting stuff. The annoying thing is, you look outside, lovely sunny day. Unfortunately, I'm doing this. Had a bit of a phone call situation. People kept phoning me, which isn't a bad thing. Work at the end of the day. It has meant that I carried on with making this adapter. Added this Lambda wiring. Forgot to turn the camera back on. <laughs> so, wait, you have missed a bit of the production. Basically now I've just got to add an extra sensor input, so five, five volt signal ground and analog input, which I'm gonna use for flex fuel. I need to heat shrink, use the heat gun on these now that I know they all work and they're all in the right place. Put it back on the car, test the OMP support, and then take the car apart again, ready for the new injectors, etc. So just teeing into the power wire for the power for the lamb sensor. So I'm just using a butt crimp, a bit of heat shrink. This is an adhesive heat shrink, so that the joint will be secure, be nice and strong in case of That's the pin for the flex fuel input, and that's in. And then we've got a 5 volt pin here that's free. Okay, and then we've got a spare sensor ground just below it. Okay, so those three nicely for flex fuel. Got a bit of tape on them, just so they stay together. Okay, so now we've now got the external. So this has got one coil input, so it runs direct fire, because the standard RX-7s are a waste of spark on the leading coils. Uh, we've got a 12 volt power and output, the boost control solenoid. Phone's going again. And we've also got one analog input, which I was gonna use for the AEM wideband, but now I'm just gonna, that was gonna be a temporary. We've got the LSU 4.9 and we've got the flex fuel which will be added at a later point. So now once I put this on the car and make sure the oil metering pump support works, then I can heat shrink all these, just shrink them down with a heat gun and use potting compound to glue so that the solder won't break or pull or anything like that. Tape up the loom nicely, it'd be lovely. Okay, so the adapter on the bench ready to go, along with the lamb sensor, genuine Bosch LSU 4.9. Car's up in the air, while it's up in the air, just need to take this exhaust bung out. Exhaust from video number one. So basically you just remove this exhaust bung, run the LAM sensor along with this blue wire, which is the AEM gauge. Run it up there to my bung, which is just up there. Then I can plug the ECU on and give it a try. So I can get on with that now. master software. I've already pre-set up the OMP parameters, so I've enabled it, given the position sensor input. I've also made a rough position target table. The outputs for the stepper motor are set. So if I power on the car, so because I've made changes without the car, so if you 
doesn't use client data, I mean, it's gonna use the data that's from my laptop. Because I've added the wideband sensor, I also need to set that up, make the map permanent. So now we should be able to start the car, and hopefully the OMP will work. working. It's quite rich. This error is just showing that it's got a warm-up function so that it won't let the car rev before it's warm. So if we open the analog inputs, so I'm currently using analog 6. So we can see that's 0.96 volts. If I add some duty to the oil meter and pump, voltage of that goes up. So I'm adding duty to the table. It's adding voltage, therefore adding oil. So that all seems to work very nicely. So the fueling isn't currently working. Because I didn't have a lamb sensor, closed loop is off. I can turn closed loop on now and see how quickly it works. I've already set up my AFR tables. support it's fully working and as we are there you can see my eyes are streaming a little bit it is quite smoky still the exhaust system oh. so that concludes this episode so next time we'll be taking the top intake off and changing the injectors for injector dynamics and the radium fuel rails. I'll also be adding the flex fuel sensor as part of the fuel type because I'll have to change. And I'll also add the EGT sensor. Like, share and subscribe if you want to. And hopefully there'll be some comp content soon on my M3, which has just come back from the paint shop and I've also just done the rod bearings on. Thank you very much guys.